Okay, in this video we're going to talk about naming notes on the staff. So you can see here we have a treble clef and we have a bass clef. Treble clef is sometimes called the G clef because this little target thing right here is marking where the G line is. This is sometimes called an F clef. The bass clef is sometimes called an F clef because these two dots surround the F. And at one time earlier in history, these clefs were movable, meaning this wasn't always the F line, or the, the note between the, the line between the two dots was always F. But that F could be in different places as this clef was moved up and down. These days, this clef in particular is not moved in modern notation. This one does get moved very rarely. I have not used it myself being a percussionist, but I believe there are some instruments that use this clef in an altered position. And the C clef, which we'll talk about later, does get moved a couple of different places. Uh, so naming the notes on the line within the staff, every good boy does fine. We've most, most of you, I'm sure, have heard that before. Uh, first line is E for every good boy B does D, F for fine. And then the spaces are F, A, C, E, which spells the word face. On the bass clef, I try to use this mnemonic because it's very different from this one. I don't like the two being very similar. So the mnemonic that I use for the bass clef is green buses drive fast always. And for the spaces, all cows eat grass. Now you're going to develop a relationship with each of these lines and spaces pretty quickly if you're a music major. So over time, you're not going to need to use these mnemonics, um, not for very long. But at the beginning, it does give you a, it's a little childish, but it does give you a framework and zeroes you in on what the right notes are without too much work. Um, eventually, you're going to get to where you see, say, this line on a treble clef, this middle line, you're just going to know it's a B, or even faster than that, eventually, you won't have to even think it's a B, you'll just push that button on your piano, uh, or your fingering, or whatever you're going to do. You won't even need to use the letter in your mind, you'll just go straight to the, the sound, or the key combination. Um, one thing we need to talk about here on the treble and bass staff are ledger lines. So if the top line of a treble clef is an F, we can continue past the end of the staff by continuing up the alphabet, F, G, A, B. You can also notice here, if we go line, space, line, space, line, space, going up here, we are going up the alphabet, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then we would continue on up G, A, B. In the bass clef, it works the same way. Top line here is an A, there's a B, there's a C. That is actually middle C. I'll show you the grand staff in a moment. We'll talk about middle C a little bit more. And this also works going down. E for every. We can go down the alphabet from every E, D, C, B, and so on. You can go down as far as you want. That would be a D and you'll get comfortable reading those as you uh, study music that uses these. On the bass clef, bottom line is G, so there's F, E, D, C. That C is the lowest note that a cello can play, the open low string on a cello, is that C below the bass clef. Five octave marimbas also have that as the lowest note. Okay. I'll be back in just a moment with the grand staff and the C clefs.